Jan Böhmer from Shopware. Welcome to this uh, last presentation, uh, Nico from Inpera. I will start and then uh, hand over to Nico. I'm also working in the enterprise relations management. We are um, working with the uh, key accounts and of course with the agencies. I have a question. Do you know Udo Lindenberg, the German singer, rock singer? My dad has been a fan ever since I remember. And uh, since Udo Lindenberg has actually uh, uh, extended his format uh, through MTV Unplugged performances, my generation also knows him. Basically, you can uh, draw the analogy to the B2B commerce process because you use uh, uh, business models which are actually made fit for the digital world. This is an impression from last year. Um, why does Shopware do B2B? That was clearly driven by our community. So we listened to what you told us and we have gone or extended our own horizon. Uh, EB Research uh, actually presented uh, an interesting study which uh, was uh, then uh, translated into to the B2B suite after its publication. This is based on expert interviews. So they asked mid-sized and large companies about their view of uh, the future market development. And you can imagine that private online behavior will also be transferred to the business world. And this will define the requirements for the platform. Of course, comfort, convenience, speed, and of course, uh, greater choice for the consumer. This is the first chart. You can see that two questions, one forward-looking, you know, what will be the development of B2B commerce in the next five years? and a retrospective perspective, what has been the change over the last two years. 57% said uh, that in the next five years, there will be a significant increase in online shopping behavior to B2B platforms. 33% uh, said that uh, there will be a slight increase either on their own platforms or their own purchasing behavior. And through these interviews, we found uh, that even with a retrospective uh, view, 34% said that the business has been growing. Companies from the steel industry, uh, crafts uh, undertakings, they can actually sense how the market is changing. So when we conduct uh, the interviews, what functions do we need on the platform? 74% of experts uh, said uh, that they need to be um, authorized or empowered and Stefan Hamann and Sebastian Klöpper demonstrated that this tool has already been included. So uh, lists of approved suppliers, Nico is going to report on that. That's quite important for the construction industry because of projects. Uh, so it might also be an internal platform. You don't necessarily have a platform ex for external customers only. You can use that to improve your internal processes as well. And there are more and more queries so that internal shopping portals are created, in particular for the construction industry. And you can see that uh, the purchasing behavior um, is to be directed to uh, limited assortments. So uh, you cannot necessarily access all parts of an online store. So this way, you can actually reduce your customer acquisition costs. So full service customers uh, who uh, were catered for by so Salesforce can become independent or autonomous customers. And if you manage uh, to trans uh, tran or convert them to uh, self-service customers, you may actually reach out to customers who maybe beforehand did not really were not really regarded as profitable. And uh, this way you can actually get completely different transaction volumes. Now this is the B2B suite with, the, um, with last year's version. And uh, we have actually uh, been able to integrate that into the shopware shop. Uh, you can actually upload that uh, if you want to have CRM data. 
you can actually have uh, certain rules which you define. So basically, this was the version of last year. And we have been able to upload contact data, digital. You were able to define roles. So let's say I'm an employee, I can only upload a list. Uh, let's say the superior can actually uh, make purchases for up to 500 euros. And uh, you can actually define that in the portal. And any lists uh, that you use for projects can also be linked to budget. So how much of the budget you use up. Uh, Nico is going to show you how this works. And uh, I actually made this presentation in Munich and I learned that, you know, fast ordering is very important. You need to be, uh, you need to provide a fast solution and you can have a CSV import, an API or an elastic search and that way you can actually uh, place the order quite quickly. Nico is going to report on how Impera has actually implemented this uh, for the construction industry. Yeah, wow, hört man mich? Yeah. Also, erstmal herzlichen Dank. So welcome uh, uh, to the presentation and thank you for the invitation. This has been a great cooperation and I would like to show you what Impera does and how we use shopware and uh, uh, how we implement that for the construction material market. A few words to introduce myself. My name is Nicolas Fritsch. People call me Nico. I'm, uh, I've studied business engineering. I studied in Bamberg, Budapest, and California. And in 1995, when I was 14, I started programming because my parents wouldn't buy any internet access for me. So basically, this was the starting point uh, to for a roller coaster ride. Uh, today, I'm no longer allowed to do that much programming, but I'm now a presenter. So. 2008 to 2017, we have been working in consulting. I established uh, two companies, Bondes, a digital agency, and a SaaS solution with AdBill. So uh, I had the technical experience. In 2017, Impera was established. And after uh, some time, I decided to take on the responsibility of CTO. Now, what were the challenges in the construction material industry? I didn't know anything about that. Maybe I knew that from when I helped my parents, you know, to um, paint, uh, repaint the house or put up new wallpaper. But I had no idea about the actual procurement process uh, and ordering ordering process. Now, what are the main challenges? First of all, it's um, difficult to find the right products and the best price because uh, there is uh, very little transparency, if any, so you don't have any uh, price lists. Uh, of course, there are price lists and of course, there are the real prices. So, And it's not that easy to uh, ascertain what the real price is. Often uh, the uh, purchasing routes or the order routes are quite complicated. Sometimes you send a fax, you get a phone call, and even with sending an email, you get uh, you know some follow-up questions. So it's quite a complex process. Availability, another important point. You need to know you know what's on stock when you call the. Uh, uh, building material or construction material retailer, whether the material is on stock, they have not, they may, may not have the time to ask the commissioning, whether they've got enough, and of course the system is maybe not up to date. Of course we have a lack of know-how because they focus on the construction material, so not uh, digitization or digital transformation. So there's very, uh, very few uh, digital elements uh, in a house, so basically it consists of brick and mortar. So we have uh, cost structures which are not conducive to innovation because we have a three-stage sales organization and none of these uh, uh, levels of the sales organization want to relinqu relinquish anything and uh, you have a certain uh, 
uh, kind of packaging sizes, um, that's also a given. And of course, uh, uh, you may not have uh, a logistic with crane where you actually have to transport material with a crane. So you need some uh, kind of local logistics as well. And of course, the intransparency in the cooperation. Often partners change uh, very quickly and you don't know who's going to do what. Uh, so there's this uncertainty and you know, re realize that for the construction companies themselves because the partners change for every project. So it's rarely always the same providers or the, re the same partners. Now, how? What was the motivation? Janis Fiebrock, who's Impera's uh, CEO, who can't be with us today, um, we worked with him and also in our cooperation with Bondis uh, for his former employer. And for 10 years, he had this dream of introducing digital transformation to the construction material industry. And he consulted us and asked us to take over the technical side of that. Up to that point, construction material was not really an interesting industry for us. But after talking to, to him, we became more and more interested and said, yes, of course, we do the technical side. We help you with the digital transformation. But you have to give us explanations about construction materials. So I think well, this has worked very well for both of us. Uh, of course, it's uh, positive to have good customer relations, which uh, put our cooperation on a confidential uh, basis. Uh, it's uh, actually better to have this uh, relationship rather than starting with digital transformation but not knowing the industry. So this low level of uh, digital transformation was uh, what appealed to us. Uh, and of course, uh, we realized uh, that 80% of purchasing orders are placed by fax or telephone. And that's uh, what made it so challenging for us. What is Impera? It's a procurement platform, which you may know from other industries. Uh, automotive is uh, the classic. Uh, it's quite common there. But uh, in most industries, they have digital procurement platforms and uh, they are important. And of course, uh, that uh, is the starting point for these procurement systems. What does Impera do? On the one hand, uh, uh, the platform helps them to improve transparencies. You know the prices. You can look at uh, the stock levels and uh, that will save time and, of course, service. It may sound a bit uh, strange, you know, service for an online shop, how does that fit together? But each small construction material supplier does not have enough resources uh, to be an expert on every uh, segment of DIY and uh, provide uh, information to uh, construction companies. But that's possible because we are a full uh, assortment of full range provider, we can also um, get experts on boards and theref therefore provide added value and service to the customers. And of course, uh, this uh, will be translated into a cost reduction for each uh, purchase order. Let's uh, take a look at uh, what the platform looks like. So we have uh, the uh, producers and uh, the uh, construction material retailers and uh, they deliver that uh, either to the DIY store or to the customer. We get the product data from the um, producers and this is where we have an exchange between us and uh, the retail uh, sector, the construction material sector. We're going to take a closer look at the technical architecture which I outlined and on the right hand side you see the different channels that uh, a construction company may use. So we have uh, small teams uh, two of two and three um, who travel uh, through Germany and actually uh, consult uh, the smaller construction sites and in terms of the employees uh, this uh, will actually go even up to groups with uh, several hundred people and uh, who buy construction material for several hundred million euros per year. So it's a vast range of companies. So for the general companies, uh, 
who uh, still place purchase orders on the phone, phone they want to do that as well. We said that uh, you can digitize the sales organization. Maybe you can actually uh, see some visual detection, but people can place purchase orders as they used to. And uh, of course, it's not enough to simply um, establish an online shop. Uh, let's say you have some construction material, a construction company who orders something, let's say 60 times XC80 uh, size, 60 millimeter. They just write it on the fax. It's delivered uh, or it's sent to the dealer and then the next day it's delivered. Uh, so uh, you can actually uh, open your computer, log in, look for the product, put it into the shopping basket, then check out and then order the product. So it's not really very convenient. So the, the people can still order the way they used to, but they have to be um, accustomed or um, get used to it very quickly. So, um, of course, they need to see how they can actually save the information and also the documentation, the delivery notes. They can all save that in their own portals and they realize that's great for them and also for their tax advisor. So you can actually use uh, an app or, or something else uh, or an API or a user interface. But uh, BIMS, that's uh, specific to the construction industry. It's uh, something quite new. So it's called building information modeling. So the, the planning phase can actually be conducted seamlessly. So the architect will uh, design the building and then you have a kind of the bill of quantities or you can generate bill of quantities. You may use DIN standards as a reference. You can also upload that as well so that you uh, really can determine the cost for the construction material. You can get also get a rough estimate of um, how what costs you can expect because uh, the uh, material costs account for about one third of the overall project costs. So we also have the classical browser order process uh, for people who are used to digital ordering for uh, ordering from Amazon and who uh, already are familiar with the added value. Uh, this uh, Impera engine, which was the midsection of that, and we wanted to have a modular structure for that. So you nev you don't build monoliths liths anymore, so you have to uh, have a modular structure. Uh, I'll explain why. It's an important point. Uh, so you may actually get the wrong junction, and you have to go back, uh, but you just uh, replace one module, but without the modular structure, you have a problem. If you want to change something, you need to change the entire system, and then it may actually crash. So what's important when uh, evaluating the modules? Of course, uh, time to market. As a startup, you are, you're always tight for funding and um, you don't have much time, so time to market is really of the essence. So how quickly can you actually go live? But um, you also need to, uh, it depends a little, let's say for six months up to the MPP, uh, we, it took us three months to do the evaluation. So do take sufficient time for the evaluation and uh, give that time to the people who conduct the evaluation because they do research, they read websites, they look at studies, of course, but this is uh, much more substantial because it can be a make or break aspect. Uh, the module should be flexible. So regardless of uh, which module you select, whether it's uh, the shop component, the product information system, it should be flexible enough so that you will be able to adapt it, uh, to redesign it, uh, or to change the interfaces. And of course, the connectivity, that's also important. You have to try, you have to make sure you can communicate with other components, but also with the outside world. Because uh, if there's a higher level of digitization in the outside world, it's imperative. And uh, the last uh, element, build or buy, there are pros and cons to both. Uh, I'm a big fan of buy and customize, which is also one of the benefits of shop where you have a good uh, 
basis, for instance, uh, 18 years of experience in e-commerce, and then you can use all this expertise. But it may not be 100% fit for me. But at least I have, a, a, have an 80% fit, and I can customize the remaining 20% so that it is the optimum solution for me. Now, what was the result? So we broke down this monolith into a modular structure. We have uh, all sorts of components or modules. So let's start from bottom to top. We have the server infrastructure as a basis. Then we have the BME cat reader, which is the format for the catalog data. Then we have the import manager, who's able to read these data. Uh, actually, uh, it actually includes data from the 1980s. So <laughs> it's not funny while you're doing it, but afterwards you think it's quite funny. You still find TIFF data. Uh, so it's <laughs> quite interesting. Uh, didn't didn't believe I would s still see that in 2018, but with hindsight, it was fun. Well, the import manager, we built the product data. Then we have the product information system. Then we have a middleware, which communicates with the dealers, i.e. with the ERP systems of the local um, uh, dealers. And then it links to our ERP system. And this is where shopware starts. This is a shop where uh, starts with the customization and uh, uh, in-house developments. Uh, so this is also for our sales organization, uh, but also for our customers who can log in and actually see their own bills. They can do their, you know, um, order quick orders, but also the uh, browser front end. Uh, and the API or the standard interfaces, so that's ideal for our purposes. What's important for the construction company? So for the big uh, construction companies, it's important to have one interface and of course it's all about the ordering whether it pre-order about the stock situation prices availability so uh, you actually say these are my specifications which products would be suitable for me so before you place the order you can probably renegotiate the price then you place the order then you want to send it off digitally and then you want to get uh, digital bills uh, and delivery notes, be it PDF or EDI, so at least it should be a digital format if possible. And then oh, we have the price negotiations here oh, with the uh, dealer, so the assortment matching. We have the full assortment, the full range, and of course we match that with the local assortment of the local dealer. And uh, of course, uh, especially in a region uh, so where you order as a construction company that is on stock. So you can see so that uh, there's quite a lot of data here. So why shopware? I said uh, it's possible uh, to customize that. Uh, 70 to 80 percent uh, we can use off the shelf, but we have to customize the rest. So it's still a saving compared to with uh, starting from scratch and uh, making the same mistakes that others have made before us. So um, we're quite uh, grateful that we are able to use this great shopware system and we can then customize this, the B2B suite. Uh, actually meets so many of our requirements, uh, uh, so uh, actually includes so many functions and with the B2B Suite 2.0 that uh, basically features some of our ideas, so this is a great uh, uh, program and uh, helped us save time. So the processes that uh, were important uh, for us in the B2B Suite uh, were these release um, uh, processes that had to do with the roles uh, because uh, you should be able to order material uh, from the construction site but the site manager does not have do, does not have um, every authorization so it's good to actually kind of specify that and restrict that 
address management is one of the most important features uh, because, uh, of course, construction sites are delivery addresses. And I will explain later why that's important and it's not simply an address. There's more to that. And, of course, other interfaces uh, where uh, uh, an ecosystem has evolved different ERP uh, applications, stamp systems, order systems uh, with the GDI, OCE components. And apart from shopware, there are other modules, and you were able to see them on the screen. We have importer and connectors, which we build ourselves, that connect the different modules. We partially also um, chose elements from Basecom, the connector, for example, between Akineo and um, Stenerix. And um, there's a good collaboration around this. Then um, we have uh, Akineo as a basic system, which is um, just as we like it. It's very lean, could be a bit faster, but it's a great tool. And then the connection to MS Dynamics, which usually takes place on the um, retail um, side. It's um, a deviation of Dynamics. It's not really easy to connect to it, but um, if you have some standard components, if you can buy them, connect them, that's uh, usually helpful. What are the learnings from the evaluation? Well, really, really take the time for the evaluation and give your team time for that because it costs a lot of money in the end if it's done too quickly. Modular um, structure uh, prevents you from having a monolithic installation. And as a last point, oh, you also need to have good support which is referring to Jan and to the community as such. And Shopware is here in Germany, gives us great access, um, understands us, is willing, and you were able to see that. Shopware wants to change. It was already um, audible in the keynote. Now uh, they're providing the new core and everything. For a techie like me, I think that's a company you can work with in the long term because they want more, more, more. And I don't um, need to be afraid that they will be sold next year. So you have a long term horizon and you can work with them. You're um, certain that there will be further developments in the future. And you can see that also with the B2B Suite 2.0. Great. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to that. Now, what is Impira like? That's uh, the website of the shop. In one or two weeks, it will be launched. It's a classic web shop, as you know it. The most important thing for me and you might be the B2B functionalities. Um, we have two test budgets, which we created. And you can see exactly how it works and how much uh, the budget is stretched. 21% uh, is consumed here. In real life, that would be one construction site, for example, where you say, well, these are the material costs. This is the forecast. This is where the budget is. And then you can see how much you have consumed already after half the building period when the building costs um, shouldn't be that high yet, but 90% of the budget is gone, then something must be wrong. So that gives you a nice way of monitoring the project as such. Now the addresses in the construction industry, that's important. An address is not just uh, something you need because you want to deliver there. It's a critical factor to us because you don't only need to extend this address and add the telephone number of the uh, supervisor at the construction site or uh, whether um, delivery is possible. Is there access for large trucks? Is there some wind power construction site um, in a rural area and you can't use a large truck to deliver there? You need to transship or do something different. So this is important information you need to store here. 
So these are attributes you can leave as a um, free text field, but no, that's not sufficient because you need to make sure that something changes. Maybe in the beginning of the project there is no address because there's no street and there's no address yet. So you need to enter that over time and maybe you add a, a directions or a map here. And then if there's a further development, it's a same construction site, but a new address. So you can't just have um, the extension of a few fields. Um, you really need to have an own entity that can change um, throughout the evolution. And the third thing I wanted to show is the quick order. We quickly do that. There's um, some nice story from reality. There were two um, civil engineering companies. They um, caved shafts, um, their concrete rings um, in every segment. There's a fixed uh, number of things you need, um, steel connectors, concrete, and um, that's defined. And if you know how deep the shaft will be, um, they wrote an Excel tool which calculates how many rings of concrete you need, what kind of other materials you need. And so far, they always had to send this Excel sheet to the um, building material provider. But now they just copy it into the tool, have price availability and everything stored, and um, save a lot of time with that. Because you can order it immediately, you know, the price um, that was requested. And it's um, really uh, quick. So they are happy and they can submit the offer with the customer. So you need to quickly uh, be quickly uh, quick in the construction industry too. I said that, and I have to repeat it, interfaces, interfaces, interfaces. It is everything that counts in the system itself, but also below the module and also to the outside world. You need to communicate. So many new things can come up. We could also integrate weather data, for example, so maybe you can um, change the delivery because it might be a muddy road um, leading to the construction site, information that might be relevant. And you need interfaces to the materials management system because uh, big companies want to strategically buy products and um, they're really happy if you offer something like that. So I don't want to say anything more. If there are any questions, you can contact me later. And the best interface is the one with Jan Wimmer and, um, and um, Shopware. So thank you very much for the nice contact and for the invitation. Thank you, Nico, for the insight. And thank you for um, coming to the stage here. Um, there's another line from the lyrics of Udo Lindenberg, so beyond horizon, um, there's a new day, together we're strong. It's really good that we're a community and that we work on the B2B project. And as you were able to see from um, Nico, there were some uh, features uh, that uh, were on the roadmap, like uh, requests, um, feedback it helps us to improve the product in the market. So your feedback really influences the outcome. So look at the roadmap of um, our company. Wait one or two days because we're just providing the new suite. And uh, take the opportunity to um, tell us what happens in the market. So please contact us any time. If there are any questions, um, ask us now or later. You can address the entire team with that. I wish all of you a nice evening, and we will have some ag um, liquor later um, in the evening. Thank you. Genau, vielen Dank auch von meiner Seite. Um, Thank you very much. Um, I think there is time for questions now. Hello. There's a question. Apart from Shopware, um, we also need an R ERP system and a PIM system. So that's necessary, it even said. It's required. Why? Well, because of the dimensions, um, I wouldn't say that it's generally necessary. 
If you only have a three-person shop, um, you don't really need that. But uh, the BIM system is um, about modularity. You can handle your users and so on. But uh, somewhere, if you want to extend, if you want to add a mobile app, then um, you need to go through uh, Shopware. And uh, maybe it's uh, smart to have the data all in one place and merge it there. So also for your sales team in-house, um, they can all access the PIM system. So they shouldn't really interfere with the live shop. So it does make sense to capsule data and have this single place of truth, where you have the product data. The shop system is only for the logics, I think. And that's the great strength of both systems. So then you're independent. Um, and you can use your data, have further connections without um, harming the performance of the shop. So if you manage everything in the shop, um, then it's a lot of access. Um, you have the in-house people, you have customers, you have um, the updating. All that um, has an impact on the performance. Um, if you have your PIM system, then that doesn't slow down the performance of the shop. You need to say um, you have a lot of items, a lot of SKUs. Um, it's half a million or so, and the number is increasing, so maybe that's a really a long one. I think it's 280 different attributes for each product, so that's quite a lot. A lot of things, like um, customs numbers, um, DIN standards, a lot of information, a lot of things I hadn't seen before. Other questions? Well, yes, I have a couple of questions. When did you start to implement the project and how many developers worked on it? Oh, good question. The evaluation began in November, December. And then February, we began to actually fill in the order forms. So Jan was happy. Then the past three months, we developed the work and are about to launch it. There were a few challenges, like uh, converting data from zip files and TIFF files uh, from the 80s. So that was the one thing. And on the other hand, developers, there were six, five developers. If you take the designer in at six, and two, two developers are still working on it. So six to eight people, but it's also very modular. You don't always have everyone working at it on the same time. So uh, if you use them fully, four or five, that's quite a lot of people for a startup. And with Akini, Neo, uh, do they use the enterprise version or do they work with the community edition? We work with the community edition. And if people really want to use it, then we have to decide again, even though we already have the product, whether we want to have our own front end for our own people to enrich the data, or whether we use Akineo Enterprise and then have the own management. And if I understand it correctly, the uh, materials are delivered by local providers. Are these all materials from one corporation or from different corporations? Good question. That goes into a lot of detail. Well, with Heinz, uh, a data supplier, um, who uh, delivers data across all building materials, but all corporations are on their supervisory board, uh, we work with them because with all the chairmen, CEOs, depending on what kind of corporation it is, uh, we needed uh, the go. Well, they all are interested and are looking at what we do, but we only talk to them. Eurobaustoff, um, Hagebau, they all will come to Berlin in the next coming weeks. Uh, we don't have um, any exclusivity, any cooperation. We have an open market. Everybody can connect themselves to our system if they like. 
But then it's actually true that the 200 or 500,000 SKUs from every single manif um, supplier need to be available. Now, this is not correct. There are two approaches. On the one hand, you have a mixed um, assortment available locally, or with the algorithms, you can look at who delivers what to whom, and um, there might be a problem if you have two people who deliver. So the um, freight costs might get too high, and you don't want to subsidize them. But uh, well, if there's no one uh, being able to deliver it, you need to negotiate with others who um, are further away. And it's not an equal um, distribution. It's a normal distribution on how orders are placed. If it's a very special product, uh, it won't be able to be delivered locally. But the logic is implemented in the shop. If you have three products from three different uh, suppliers, then um, freight costs would be divided, or would you consider that? That's a good question. That's exactly the point where it starts not to be profitable anymore. As a startup, we just want to learn. And maybe we do sponsor the two other deliveries just because we want to have the data and scale our system. But we have to write algorithms and try to have not such a situation like that. Maybe we can um, ask a local logistics company, take in an extra tour um, to pick up the goods um, from the third side. And we also work with local logistics providers um, so that we uh, implement a good solution for the Berlin region. And who's your target group, um, the local tradesmen? Well, it uh, depends on who um, is purchasing. Could be Max Bögel, Goldberg, or others, but also local tradesmen. 